Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our talk today. And we will be talking about the impact of law enforcement on a suburban high school culture in central Ohio. My name is Jake Lundgren, and I'll be speaking with Avery Hicks, Grace Lau, and Tyler Wolf, with additional support from Connor Fowell, Dr. Michael Hess, and Dr. Charles Lowry. A bit of the purpose about the study is this is a qualitative case study where we want to better understand how the school and the school leaders, teachers, and students are all perceiving the impact of increased security measures throughout high schools across the country, but specifically in central Ohio. And this was inspired by a few of our teammates where in our high school experiences following the Parkland shooting in 2018, we saw a vast increase in security in each of our high school campuses. A bit of background in research that we have found is there's been an increase in cases of school violence throughout the United States as supported by these documents. And in the US between 2010 and the present, there have been 311 incidents of high school shootings alone. Additionally, um, efforts to intensify and improve school security have been on the, real, have been on the rise, not not just here in Ohio or the United States, but worldwide. So as we talk about the research questions, we wanted to use this qualitative case study to seek a better understanding of how um, school stakeholders, such as our leaders, teachers, and students, perceive their environment and the impact of security measures through employing um, increased SROs, which are school resource officers, in the school environment. So the question that we wanted to answer was how does the presence of school law enforcement such as the SROs impact the climate and culture of one suburban high school in central Ohio which we specifically looked into. And as we got to these research questions um, we did multiple research through sources of media and academic journals to look at what is being defined as a school threat. So we were looking at threats such as gun violence, even like threatening notes from students, bomb threats. And so this really intrigued um, our interest in the study to how schools take these cautionary measures um, against all types of threats, because threats don't just include only school shootings, but um, due to data compiled by CNN and multiple other media sources, suburban schools represent some of the highest number of casualties, which doesn't necessarily mean only school shootings or gun threats, but this also includes bomb threats or students threatening behavior to any um, type of student body. And so this led us to di dive into the new security measures that have become more routine in Columbus suburban schools. So the mythology for this case study um, is mainly qualitative. These focus on interviews that were between administrators, teachers, students, and resource officers at AN High School. And the majority of these were conducted in the building in a common room. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, several of the interviews were had to be or had to be conducted over the virtual communication platform Zoom. And all participants were over the age of 18 and were presented with a description of the research study and they also filled out an informed consent form. So as Jake said, the participants from the study were from all of the same public school, which uh, we interviewed administration, the SROs, teachers, and students that were above the age of 18. So the site of the school was, uh, was located in central Ohio. The campus was unique because it was often compared to a small community-sized campus. Um, in addition to the layout of the campus, there's a large white picket fence that surrounded the whole, the whole school building and uh, school community. We arranged our findings around four main perspectives or four main research uh, topics. So we looked at the administrators, uh, the SROs, and the teachers and the students. After speaking with two lead administrators of ANN, we as a research team were able to gather qualitative data and information about many aspects of the school. Principal A has been at ANN for two years and Principal B has spent eight years as a teacher and now has spent the last two years in administration. Being a relatively new administration team, they emphasize their efforts towards building a culture of accountability that achieves the best academic and developmental outcomes for each student. A little touch about the layout of the building. The a and camp campus is described as a small community college because of the open design and courtyard it has. When discussing with the administrators of, about the exposed flaws in the design of the campus, they talked about a lot of low to high level security threats. 
Next, when we talked about ID badges with the administration staff, they explained how the prior administration had implemented this change, but at the time of the implementation, there's a large administration change which ended up in a new high school principal. They explained that the initial pushback resulted in a, a difficult tr short transition period. However, after some time of this being enforced, with the changes in the rewards and punishments attached to wearing the badge, the students adapted it to their own dress code. The badges are seen by the administration as an extra step in security because of their ability to quickly identify students and detect possible threats. Understanding of the collaboration between the SRO and the administration was seen as crucial to an understanding of the delegation of punishments and leadership roles between the school. The administrators explained that the relationship between the officers and the administration board is a very positive in the sense that they have a good communication and work ethic together on issues within the school. The second perspective that we looked at in this case study was that of a student resource officer or SRO. And there are two present at the within the district. However, we chose to interview Officer Jacob Smith, which is a pseudonym who has been working primarily in the high school for the past seven years. And he has a total of 20 years within the AN Police Department. Now, a unique thing about Officer Smith, opposed to some other um, student resource officers, is he is actually employed by the AN Police Department, where some other schools may use a third party or the officer is directly employed by from the school. Um, by having the police department as his employer, it negates a little bit of that conflict of interest. Officer Schmidt is only allowed to enforce legal rules, um, so he's really not allowed to do much according to the school rules, except for perhaps some of the lanyards that we've been talking about, just since that's more of a security issue than anything. The perception of having police officers inside of the schools can really vary on how a student has perceived police officers in their past. And naturally, this can really take into account when you're trying to be in a learning environment. For example, if a student has grown up for their entire life and seen these police as this threatening force and they're trying to just get through their school day, having one there uh, can sometimes be intimidating. One of the big takeaways that I had from our discussion was when prompted to compare AN school security to others, Officer Schmidt actually believed that AN fell somewhere near the bottom of the school security spectrum. And this is simply because while it may look quite intimidating with the big fences, there's still ways in and a student will always try to be nice and they might hold open the door for someone. And just like that, it only takes one moment uh, for that security to go down. I dove deeper into the teacher perspective. As we stated earlier, we were able to talk to two teachers that have been working at AN for a combined 33 years, which is pretty impressive. We were able to conduct these interviews in person on campus prior to the COVID epide epidemic. After we had our discussions with the teachers, we noticed that both teacher one and teacher two emphasized the need for conversations with the students about their safety after they had training that was mandated by the school, which was also interesting to hear that the school actually didn't mandate the conversations with the students. The teachers both took it upon themselves to reciprocate the information that was taught to them on how what to do and how to react in situations that they need to react quickly to. And they also, with those conversations, they emphasize the importance for having the lanyards and holding those students accountable for the lanyards. We also um, learned that the teachers have a positive experience with the SROs on campus and definitely recognize the need for them and use their faces as of familiar familiarity so then the students don't feel threatened by their presence on campus. Overall, both teachers felt that they were safe in their work environment and the district prepared both the teachers and the students for the worst, worst case scenarios. And the teachers emphasized the need for security in the school, such as the SROs, the lanyards, and the cameras that are uh, displayed throughout the whole entire campus. As for the student perspective, 
We luckily got the chance to interview two students, but both interviews had to be conducted via Zoom. Diving into talking into both of those students, we kind of discussed similarities we saw with those students, and um, those included discussing their, quote, lack of thought of school safety in the school. They generally became frustrated with things like the new security measures with the lanyard security badges and the doors being locked around the buildings, those became more of tokens of annoyance to the student body rather than something they were grateful for due to their lack of thought of safety. This annoyance overall of new security resulted in frustration. Uh, both students commented that the student body was generally frustrated with the freedoms that were taken away. This lack of freedom was angering for the high schoolers as their social areas that were privileges for them were taken away, as was the privilege of open lunch, where they, um, once you got to high school you, and reached a certain grade and a certain GPA, you actually got to leave for lunch and go grab food um, around the community and you could bring it back to the school and eat it. Um, this lack of freedom was something the student body was generally frustrated with which also added that negative connotation towards the new security measures that were put in place. Both students also agreed on the differing perspectives that the SRO holds within the school. Um, I remember student number two really dived into this one. Um, they talked about if a student was consistently in trouble and trying to bend the rules and ignoring the security measures, uh, did not wear their ID badge, let people in the school, tried to leave for lunch, things like that. Um, they would see the SRO as a bothersome figure and they wouldn't feel safe around him. Instead, they would try to run from him, not in a threatening way, but because they were generally bothered with how much they were getting caught for. The student number two did say um, they specifically and other kids uh, definitely had a friendly relationship um, with the SRO, which also made them see the SRO more as a friend. Both students really spoke for their student body when they were talking about the frustration of truly be treat being treated more like middle schoolers rather than high schoolers. And as for the discussion, talked about our overarching questions and conclusions, and a few things we came up with included just how the student responses to the increased security um, can vary depending on personal experiences with administration authority and police officers. You will have negative relationships with the authority around you or the police officers because you're trying to bend some of the new rules that the school puts in place for their safety. But because the, the kids, um, again, think don't think of their safety like the administration does, this does um, create a negative connotation with the student responses. As for the teacher responses, they can also vary depending on the personal opinions with increased security. We have some teachers that um, don't enforce the lanyard badges as strict as other teachers do. You know, some teachers let it slide and um, that can reflect some teacher opinions on the increased security in school as well. As for some questions, we thought, you know, where does the school draw the line between protecting their students versus patrolling them? And just like I touched on on the last slide, the students want to be treated like high schoolers. They are becoming young adults. They will be going off to college. So as teachers, we don't want to patrol them, but we are looking at their safety in a way different way than they are, which creates um, that division. And finally, how can a school prepare students to be safe if they are not thinking about safety to begin with? And we really don't have an answer for this one because at the same time, we want students to feel safe in schools at all time and obviously not feel danger when walking through the hallways, but without that understanding that threats are possible, they aren't likely to understand the security measures that are being implemented. And we don't want to remind them of danger, but we also want them to understand that threats can happen at any point in time and just spreading that awareness. So I guess that leaves us to think more about that and figure it out once kids back around school and just seeing how things have changed and whether, where they'll go. So thank you for listening guys. And um, I hope you have a great rest of your day.